right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here with Micah and Joe. We're still in the middle of our playoffs right now, but you guys have been amazing uh, commenting, giving us feedback on this little segment, and it's been decided. Uh, we have to give a shout out to everybody, first of all, um, for submitting names, for, for submitting segment ideas, but um, we we have a new slogan and we have a new title for uh, for this segment. So please let us know. Um, and without further ado, uh, we'd like to ask you, do you practice safe sets? Because we are here to advise against that. Welcome back to another episode of Sets Education with Micah and Joe here in Turkey and France. We're going to be going into the games within the games, right, Micah, today? We're going into yeah. a couple of our matches in the past few months, giving you guys a little bit of insight uh, of why we made certain decisions, how we played certain balls, what we were doing uh, on the court. And uh, again, please continue to comment uh, what you guys want to hear from us. We really take that into consideration. We look at all comments um, when we are deciding what the topic is. But uh, without further ado, um, we're going to get right into it. We're going to be starting off here with Micah. Uh, and we're going to be taking a look at specifically really his matchup with Zoxa this year. Who is Mike, you want to give a little bit of background on who Zoxa is <coughs> and historically as a club uh, bef- as I kind of get the video up and rolling here? Yeah, uh, so Zaksa is the one of the best teams in Poland um, and has been historically the best team in the world. For the past three years, they've won Champions League, which is a league really like made of the best teams of all of the different domestic leagues in Europe. And it's pretty insane to be able to win it once, and they've won it three times in a row. And we are playing them here in the run of for their fourth um, their fourth Champions League title in a row. So I've played around with my serve a little bit. Um, and in this game, I'm going with a lower toss, and I was really successful. Um, and pretty much the entire game, I just whacked it as hard as I could, as you can see here. All top spin. And basically, the, they're, we're going to show this game, and then we're going to show the changes and adjustments that I made into the second game. Um, but I wanted to show here that I, I'm pretty much only top spinning. So as you can see, and, and serving pretty well, getting them into a lot of trouble. Okay. And then another another thing here that I wanted to show is Dave Smith uh, is a USA national team, three-time Olympian, I want to say. Um, and is just an amazing middle blocker. Something that makes him so special is his ability to hit with angles. Um, and he likes to turn. He's got like this ability to turn in the middle of the air and like really open up into one and spike it like at just a ridiculous angle. And so you can see here that he does it. I'm in the right spot, but I'm not far enough up. And I come up to him after this play and I let him know like, hey, I'm all over that. Like, I'm going to get the next one. And he tells me, he's like, you weren't even close. Like, no way you're going to dig me. Basically, is the conversation that we have. And so... Okay, these these are the two themes from this uh, from this first match is my jump serve. I'm going top spin, low toss, and this David Smith uh, conversation I have with David Smith and his ability to hit cut back with like an, at an insane angle. So now we're gonna pull up uh, our next game. This was away. Uh, we lost three two, and. You need to, so we went home and we needed to win 3 0 or 3 1. Or we win in 3 2, which is in five, and we'd have to play a golden set. So we're going to go to the end of the first set here um, while Joe pulls this up. And it should be 22 24. 22 24, we're losing in the first set. We started this game off 9 0, we were losing. And I'm coming back to serve. It's game point for them. And I've actually hit a few float serves um, out of this low toss in this game and really gotten them into trouble. And so I'm coming back to serve. Obviously, it's game point for them. And I'm kind of trying to decide if I should stick with the float serve that's been working in this game or go back to the top spin serve, which was working in the last game. And here I decide that I'm going to get it on their younger player, um, he's 18 years old. He's a stud. Um, but the rest of them are very experienced. And he's kind of 
a, a lesser – he's the least experienced player on the court. And so I just want to make sure that I, I locate the ball and get a float serve on him. And so you can play it out here. I go to bed Norris and miss. David hits cutback, and you can pause it. And I really – I'm up there. Like it's re it's really rare to dig a dig a ball at the three meter line. If you can rewind it, Joe, um, like from the middle, and he's right in my face. And like sometimes it's hard to stand. It's hard to hang in there, especially with him being right in front of me. You kind of want to move back because you don't want to take one off the head. But because of our conversation we had in the last match, I decided to hang in there, put the helmet on just in case, and was able to pick him up uh, at a really crucial moment. And then able to make the dig after they set Coach Matic, uh, we transition in. Irvin puts it away. You guys went and down so here, like nine to this set too, right, or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. It was insane. I think I really do think it was nine zero or something. Or nine nine, nine nine one maybe. I don't know. It was crazy. And so I do go back. Obviously, uh, the float serve had worked the turn the turn before, and I don't. I didn't want to really change it up. I didn't feel like they were. They were. They were not going to come up and play it with, with their hands because of the last game I was able to serve so many times with topspin. Um, and it would, it would be really, really risky for them to take a step up on, on the toss. And so I knew that they'd be back and decided it was kind of also just percentage play. Like you kind of have them on their toes a little bit. Pressure's on them as well um, to side out. And the float serve's obviously a little bit more successful or like, efficient of a serve you're going to get it in more than you're going to get in your top spin serve mm -hmm. and so just wanted to get it back on back on the guy end up not getting it on the guy but right in the seam he's not aggressive and doesn't kind of take it in bed noise is not aggressive and doesn't take it and so it kind of lands in between them um and that's pretty much the games within the game um you can kind of see how it's interesting to play teams back to back one home one away um the adjustments that different teams make and those are two of the small adjustments. I know that they're not, they're not actually have, they don't have anything to do with setting. Mm -hmm. But when I thought about this, those are two of the plays that I thought of right away. Um, just because of the difference that, that I did in from game to game and, and kind of the games within the game. Cool. The, uh, I think it was interesting. We, I was talking to a school last week here in France, and I was talking actually with uh, Stefano, who is Micah's old assistant coach too in Poitiers, and he and I were talking to this school last week, and they asked like questions about like what's the most difficult position, all this stuff, and uh, Stay was like adamant, just talking about like the setting position, and he was going to an explanation in French. I understood a little bit of why exactly like the setting position is so difficult because this stuff like the serving, the attack, like. The mind games is like minuscule compared to like what setters oh, also yeah. have to deal with, like play to play, where you're every single play. Um, and I'm actually like some of the play, all the plays I brought, I'm going to bring up from um, our team or setting stuff. Perfect. And I'll kind of explain a little bit on that. Uh, okay, so taking a look now at Chalmont here in France. Uh, this is our match against Montpellier a couple weeks ago to clinch uh, first place in the regular season for us. So there's a lot of like guys who are really fired up for this night uh, as a home match. And uh, Montpellier is a really experienced team in general. And so I knew like going into it, we were going to have to change up things because this late in season, that's the one thing you have to know is there's every single team has so many numbers on your distribution and in certain rotations like they really study every single thing and every single team has a different game plan um and so for me i always have to like remind myself and make sure that i start the match a little differently than maybe the last time i played them maybe the weeks before and also like but also figure out how to get guys involved like in the moments you need them and that's the part i was talking about with michael like at the end of his, like the set, like there's so much that goes into setting because also what if you're not passing the ball? Like, that's another thing too. It's like, okay, you're not passing the ball. How do you, how do you deal with that now? But, um, this is a really good all around match for us. This is a play early in the third set in general. I think I, Mike and I talked about, it. I like to max jump on a lot of my sets cause I, I'm, you know, shorter player. So I like to get the, especially for the middle so they can hit it out of my hand a little faster. Um, but it helps on the pipe too. And I think it, makes it difficult to read if I'm playing like first tempo or pipe over. 
But this is a play. This is something I learned, actually. Not learned, but something that William last summer talked about. And it's sort of hard to see, but I remember personally doing it. Um, Legoff, a lot of the times when I slow my hands down, he, like, always jumps with the middle. Um, and so what I did here was I, like, let the ball fall a little bit to play the pipe. Yeah. And then played over the top. And you see, like, kind of exactly what I was talking about. But this is, like, changing the speed of your hands can you know, get the middle to like freeze for that half second that opens up a little bit of gap here. And so you see that happen right here where I just hold the ball like a little bit more. He jumps in the middle and then kind of opens that up. But especially like I like to get Victor are outside. He's really confident on the pipe. He's super physical. So opening that up, but teams will bunch a lot. You'll see how bunch they are right now on balls in the middle of the court. Like usually the setter is not kicking out like that. They're all like super far bunch. So figuring out ways how to open it and like changing the speed of your hands. Um, and that's something I do with like different types of sets too. And I think about that and I just, you have to tell your hitters. And this is what I asked. I asked William this last summer. Um, people who don't know William El Mago, he's, some people say he's the best setter in the world for many years, just like technically and stuff. He was like, cause I was asking him like, dude, you do so many crazy stuff sometimes. Like, how do you, how do you get your hitters to like, just go? Cause there's some hitters like. For me, I hate when a hitter says, like, oh, I didn't think you were going to do this. I didn't think you were going to do this. It's not the hitter's job to think about where the ball is going, first of all. This is, like, first thing. And they have to understand this. You just have to tell your hitter, you go on your speed. It's my job. If I'm going to change, like, I got to – if I'm going to slow my hands down, I got to accelerate the ball so it, like, gets to you at the same time. Like, you just have to understand that it's on me um, to get that ball there at the same timing if I'm going to, like, change a little thing – to be like a little more deceptive or whatever that is. So that's one thing he talked about too, is like, he's like, I just tell my guys, listen, do not wait at all. Like this, it's my job to find you guys. And so I thought that was interesting, but that was kind of an example of um, how I was able to isolate BD Gree Victor on that one play. So another thing too, is like, if you have a certain player that's not like super confident or not feeling it, figuring out ways to get them involved early in good situations is really important. Um, this builds confidence. I was talking to TJ Sanders. Shout out TJ. Uh, shout out No Easy Buckets. Dustin, always gotta give those guys a shout out. Um, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about how you set hitters into like serving well too. And I am a firm believer in this. Like, if I notice one of my big guys, big servers, has not touched the ball before, like I definitely like have that in mind when he's about to go back to the service line. Um, it doesn't mean I set him every ball. You know, there's like difference, like. It is what it is, and uh, it's something I think about. But like I said, every single match I do something differently and kind of have a different plan. But getting everybody involved is super important early. I think a lot of setters will say this. Um, but it's an insistent ball. Mike was asking me, I generate a lot of speed when I like <coughs> I open up my right shoulder a little bit. And there's a lot of people who tell you not to do this, a lot of coaches who tell you not to do this. But just with like the pace and also like connection with like Indra, like it works for us. Um, and I play the ball a little bit off my right shoulder sometimes when I, I let the ball like float a little past so I can like generate speed. And this is just an example of that it's in system, uh, back to Indra. And just like, like I said, just a slight rotation of the shoulder, but it allows like a little more speed on the ball. But I like, I try to hold it. Oh, sorry. Like, right. Like, so I'm trying to hold straight, like to the last second. And you see the middle, like Legoff there is like held in the middle. And then I kind of use the motion to generate speed with the ball. So that's something too that like I utilize to try to isolate my hitters on the pin. But it's important not to show that too early. When you start opening up really early, it's middle blockers will start reading this as well. So um, that's something that I utilize. When I but then it is pretty nasty like uh... – Tony Uti does a good job of it. For Zard, actually, both the French setters do it a decent amount. They also will set middle off of that open turn. So they'll mm -hmm. they'll let the ball fall like like just like you did and then give it to the middle. Yeah. So I think it keeps it keeps especially the left side blocker. It keeps them real honest. A hundred percent. And then Pat six three in the first. This is a sick play, but uh, I, I want to talk about just quickly like with the system. This is something we ran Lunenburg and here in Chalmont. Um, and it's like, we call it gap control in Lunenburg here. It's just mm -hmm. called like a spot. So whenever the ball gets pushed like extreme into position two, which you're going to see here, 
middles are told just to go to like this spot, which is in between the gap here, between the middle and the outside. And with the speed that we play, you ha like outsides, they either have to stay in and really help on the middle or they have to go to injury because we'll still play fast in this position with the opposite. And so that's why I think if you're able to, like playing with speed puts a lot of pressure on you. See kind of like Lagoff. We also play like fast, long distance to area four from here too. And so it's really like a mind game. Uh, and the middles are just kind of, it's like, there's a little bit of gambling goes into it, but also they have a lot of my numbers on distribution to see like what I like to play. So I have to like always change up certain matches, what I like to do with in certain situations. But here with Pat, he goes spot. And you see Lagoff stays in the middle because probably the past couple of matches I had Tennessee playing long distance. And that opened up there. And Ryhurt kind of stayed, but he's in the middle position. And Pat's playing at such a good level right now that like that's just not like an effective way to stop you got to like be on him if you're going to try to stop him right now like he sees the block really well um and so like i said like those positions like you have to change up how you play some matches i play more middle from here some i go like long distance some i play straight up with opposite some i'll play pipe more and so making sure that you're changing things up and it's not always the same thing i think is really important um especially at the higher levels so uh yeah, those are my three plays, kind of stuff that we brought up in the past few weeks. Maybe think about some plays in the past couple of weeks. But, uh, yeah, good stuff. Let me know if you guys have any questions about that down in the comments, and I'll try to respond um, as soon as I can. But we're going to go. We got one bonus clip for you guys as well. Hey. Like, it's got a little bonus for you guys. So I just realized, like, it is technically uh... – sets sets education so i should probably throw in i should probably throw in a set or two of mine um let's go with me playing against uh fenerbahce in the cup okay guys um i realize that this is sets education so i should throw in actually a few of my setting decisions you can pause it okay all right joe um but really quickly on in here, you can see when um, this is Marco Matic. He's our middle. You can see when his attacks throughout the game were, um, and you can see that in the first set, I knew that he's a very like dynamic attacker. So he actually doesn't have any balls in the first set. We played really well. I think it was like 25, 12 um, was a set source. So also, he's not going to get a lot of um, attempts because we're just kind of killing them. And whether that's aces or things that it's not going to happen. And when we do get a good pass, I knew that they would be jumping with them. Uh, and so also they changed their middle blocker and they brought in number 14, um, who is undersized middle, which is why you can see how many balls he gets in the fourth set. Um, the fourth set is when an undersized middle comes in the game. And that's when he gets five of his seven attacks. And then you can also see it's 22, 22. I set him 23, 23. I set him in 24, 24. I set him. Uh, just because I, I, I really like the matchup. So all three times across the uh, the front row when he was in, uh, I gave him the ball. And actually, Irving talked to me before this and was trying to tell me something about uh, the, the decision I was going to make. And I kind of like told him, like, dude, no worries, just pass. Oh, it was because I called a push. And for those that don't know, it's when, it's when the middle blocker is going to drift. And it's difficult for us to set Irving over Matic on the push because – um, Matic is just so big and kind of just flies out and then the ball to Irvin's pretty quick um, and so we've struggled to connect on that and he's like where should I go should I go back or should I go to the middle and I was like dude just pass Like, I'm going to set Matic on this ball like I'm not going to give you the ball he's going to go by and he's going to he's going to kill the ball which is why you can see Irvin after after I set the ball him give me like an extra like high five and a, and a, and a chest pump so you can play it Kills it, goes over the top, and Irving looks at me like, "All right, all right." That was like because we had already kind of talked about what it was gonna, what, exactly how it was gonna go. Um, also, <clears throat> when you have a guy that like a little bit more of the games within the game, when you have a guy that's undersized against a guy that's you're setting a lot, um, he typically needs to kind of commit really early, which is when he has to get down and like jump, and so that's when like the movement of a of a middle like Marco is like just so deadly because. The undersized guy is like committed to a spot and while he's committed to that like whatever a front one is marco or the middle is going to drift past him and he's just 
it's, he's undersized and the other guy's very physical. He's kind of spiking on open net or spiking over the top or outside or around. And so an idea that I kind of like to play with is to run a few ones right at him. Um, and then from there, it's like just push, 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 push until he changes his idea and decides he's going to commit almost like off of the, the left shoulder of the middle. And like, if he does that once, if he does it twice, then we're coming back to the one. Um, but he might not even stop it, even committing in the right spot. So that's the game within the game of, the, of setting for me. Uh, I realized that I didn't have any setting decisions. And so I wanted to share that. No, that's awesome. I think, I think it's good though, because setters do more than, especially Micah. He's like one of the, in the world, one who adds like so much more value than um, outside of setting to being able to score and uh, the physicality. Um, but good stuff. Yeah, this one is a little yeah. longer than some of the other ones, people. But we uh, we had more to talk about. So we appreciate all your feedback. We, Like I said, we take it in a heavy consideration. Um, and we do not advise practicing safe sets. Uh, we are very, like, we're risk takers. Mike and I definitely like to roll the dice out there. So um, we uh, we like seeing you guys go and wheel it and deal it. That's the type of setters that we like to see. I think there's a balance, though. Mike and I always talk about, like, you got to be able to take some risk, but at the same time, understand when not to take a risk. And this is like I think a it's, fi- fine I think line. The, the, correct, the correct term is smart. Like, I don't think that it's safe. But you have to have you have to set smart. Yeah. Like, and that might mean taking risk, mm. or that might mean like, oh, okay, I've got my big middle on an undersized middle. Well, this is what we're doing, and it's gonna be boring, but it's gonna work. And so, smart sets, smart sets. The thing is, you can literally make the most perfect decision and set the most <clears> perfect <throat> ball and have the most perfect situation. It still doesn't work, and people will still blame you for <laughs> setting that ball. For sure. <laughs> and it uh. That's the thing about setting. Like, you can make a terrible decision, p- terrible ball, and they score. It's like, and you look good. Like, it's that's yeah. just like the life of sports and setting specifically. It's like you, you specifically know. setting. We we deal with every single other person on the team and probably around the world that's watching, thinking that they're. It's Monday morning quarterback. We got a lot yeah. of Monday morning quarterbacks, and you're making the decision, and so. Yeah. You're going to hear about it if it doesn't go well. 100%. Yeah, people also, last note, people put a lot of uh, thought into it. Like, literally, like, they think, like, situation by situation. They don't even think a lot of times about, like, everything that's happened up to that point and understanding, right. like, in the game what's going on. It's like, all right, if you don't consider anything else that has happened, okay, yeah, <laughs> yes, then I would agree yes. with you on this situation. 100%. And that's sometimes 100%. difficult for people to understand. It's like, yeah, if you break every single play down by play by play, and I don't know anything about happened before it, then I probably would agree with you. But yeah, with no context, sure, that would be a that would be a great choice with zero context. But we've played three sets already. Like I have every decision I've made. I've so I've seen the result, yeah. and I'm bu- I'm building my what well, my decisions are based on what's what the context of the match is. Yeah. And so you're right. People like haven't paid attention, and then at twenty four twenty four, think they've got the answer, and it's like. Have you paid attention to like every set we've made and like everything yeah. they've done? So that's a really good point as well. Yeah. So appreciate everybody. Much love. Another episode this week. Uh, right in the middle of playoffs. We're uh, by the time this drops, we already played in Paris. But yeah, we're in the quarterfinals right now. Mike is also in the semifinals. Uh, nice. Playing tomorrow. Yeah, playing tomorrow. Yeah. When we record this, but uh, right. appreciate everybody. Much love. We'll talk soon.